Deborah Peters and welcome to The Deborah Peters Show. Today I am doing an old topic in a new way. It's something that I spoke on about a year and a half ago and I think it deserves a new birth, if you will, and it is the science of propaganda. Now, it's not a secret. We all know that public relations is the core of all propaganda. And that could be in a good way and it could be in a negative way. So before we dig into this, I want to let you know that I'm going to do this as a two part series. I kind of like that. I like being able to set the frame for the topic and then have you go through it and then offer you a second episode that starts to unpack the contents of the first episode in a more of a deeper way that you can then be finding that you can use it. You know, you can actually apply it to your everyday life and living and growing your business and relationships and all of that. So, but before we get started, I'm really focused on growing this channel. So many people need help right now. They need guidance in just feeling good every day. You know, sometimes just getting up and getting out there is a real serious challenge. So I'm, I'm asking you to help me with that. You can be my ambassador. First though, subscribe because otherwise how will you get more content from me and secondly make sure you click on that bell because then you'll get notifications whenever i upload new content and then from that place as you get content that you find interesting you can share it with your people and um, ideally and hopefully it'll help them move things along in their lives too so Let's first get into a little bit of the structure of how we, um, as human beings, create a relationship to the world. And that relationship to the world turns into our individual model of the world. We all have our own model of the world, and there's no right or wrong model. It's just a matter of what you've been allowing yourself to be programmed and conditioned to accept and then take that acceptance of those beliefs or values, um, goals, initiatives into living your life. And we all get to choose that. Now, some people, I suppose that's where the rubber meets the road in this, in this episode is most people don't believe or should I say, most people don't know that they can choose that. Most people think and have been taught to believe that whatever is in your life, from the level of health you have, the level of wealth you have, the quality of the relationships you have, um, the experience, the quality of experiences that come across your path, are something from the outside that are put upon you and that you actually don't have any choice in the matter. So, you know, you don't have any money, for example, and it's like, it's not your fault. It's something outside of you that's causing you not to have any money. You don't have anyone in your life, a significant other or, or good friendships. And um, so then you think it's because all men are cheaters or all women are gold diggers or or all girlfriends are you know not trustworthy or all guy friends you know want to steal your wife or your girlfriend or whatever whatever the limiting belief is i'm just saying some that are kind of old school but nonetheless i think people still have some of those limiting beliefs today so the thing is, is that none of that's really true. I mean, it's true that you're probably having that experience. I'm not saying you're not having that experience, but what I am saying is that the experience is not happening to you. It's, it's forgive me for saying this and don't shoot the messenger, but it's like, it's 
it's something about you that you don't love, that you don't feel you deserve, or that you have a limiting belief that you can't be, do, or have X, that you then embody emotionally, and that emotion is a vibration, and we're all energy, and we're all vibrating because we're all energy. Some have higher levels of energy than others, but we're all energy, and it doesn't matter if your energy is high or not high, because that's not a judgment. That's just a matter of understanding where you're at and then making new choices for yourself in terms of how you think, how you feel, how you take care of yourself, etc., that enables you to raise your vibration to have higher levels of energy. And we all get to learn that in this lifetime. If you're one of those people that wants that asks the question, you know, why am I here? Which I think a lot of people are asking right now, why am I here? What am I doing on this planet with all of this stuff going on, you know, pandemics and and shutdowns and economies and family separations and deaths. I mean, there's a lot going on and it, who wouldn't ask, you know, why am I here during this? So we can come up with a million answers, but you know, at the end of the day, you're here to evolve yourself. You're here to grow yourself. You are here to recognize your divinity and to step into that divinity, that divine spark that lives in your heart, you know, to let that be, be, not do, be the nature of you and to lead with that. So that creates a whole plethora of new choices to make. And, you know, I can already see like about half a dozen episodes here showing up for themselves, but I want to just keep it as simple as I can because I can always do these deep dives into these, the abyss of human consciousness. Um, and, you know, maybe as we move this along, I get your feedback, you know, let me know what you'd like to hear. Let me know what you'd like to learn. Stick it in the comment section. And then I can focus on that for upcoming videos because it gives me an idea as to where you want me to take this. I could take this a lot of different directions, right? But you, I want you to tell me where would you like me to take this? So the thing is, is that we are evolving. We're constantly growing. And consciousness is, is just, you know, basically like a self-awareness of how we tick, you know, what pushes our buttons, what lights us up and, and triggers negative thoughts or, or negative emotions or limiting beliefs, you know, we are always evolving and taking things up to the next level if we let ourselves do that. So how does that happen? You know, it's, it's through a process of deciphering information we are constantly seeking more and more. It's hardwired into us. It's something we cannot avoid. In fact, to keep yourself from seeking more and more, to hold yourself down from that or away from that is pain. Like it's pain and suffering. When the biggest part of pain and suffering is when people don't let themselves evolve into their greatness. It's not having, you know, doing without or not having enough that's suffering. The suffering comes when you hold yourself back and you hold yourself down. And that is more painful than not having enough. Believe me, I know. I have the book, the t-shirt, the coffee mug, the plaque on all of that because I used to do that with myself. So... The science of propaganda is really just a model for how our, our being human, how our mind becomes programmed and conditioned through patterns of sound, sight, color, shape, feeling, and the repetition of that actually is how we are living life and 
how we're programming ourselves through the living of our life. So basically, public relations understands that and it is the mechanism utilizing that big patterning machine that goes on just through living life. So for example, we live our lives through our senses. We receive life through our senses, through what we see, through what we hear, through what we taste, through what we smell, through through what we touch, you know, tactile. I was just at a meeting today with um, my new graphic designer to set up some new collateral pieces and to print hard copies because people like to receive they like to touch your business card, at least I do. They like to touch the brochure. You know, there's a reason paper comes in different thicknesses and different structure and different fabrics and materials. It has a, the fingers, when the, when the fingers touch it, there's a sensation and the sensation creates a feeling and the feeling triggers a reality. And all of that whole chain of events causes a decision to be made about that product, service, and person, company, based on that feeling that comes across. And this is how we are marketed to 24 seven. So when it comes to public relations, public relations is the, the, the encapsulation, is the utilization of how we are programmed to accept reality, to accept products, to accept services, to accept lifestyle, to discern and determine our likes, our preferences, our dislikes. It all comes through in how the senses are triggered through the repetition of advertising, marketing, messaging, it's all the same thing, right? So what we see, what we hear, what we see, I said that, what we taste, what we smell, what we touch, and and what we intuit, and also the self-talk that we have that rolls around back here telling us we're not good enough, this is gonna be hard, most people fail, it's not possible, it's already been done, there's lots of people doing it, whatever the excuses are that you make to yourself and say, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, when you make those excuses and you accept them, you're holding yourself down, you're holding yourself back. And that's where the human suffering comes into play. So we've established a couple of things here. And that's, first of all, life doesn't happen to you. That is, um, a turning point that each of us gets to make in our lifetime. We all get to go to the mirror and look in the mirror and say, I'm a victim. It's happening to me. I have no control. I have no power. Or we can go to the mirror and say, these uh, situations that I'm living right now in my life really truly suck. <laughs> and I created them. How did I create them? Well, I was thinking pretty negative. I was complaining a lot. I was watching a lot of news and focusing on fear. I was commiserating with my friends about how life is horrible and how the world is falling apart. I mean, you get the picture, right? These kinds of conversations create your reality just as much as the positive ones do. Think about it this way. Ladies and gentlemen, listen, you cannot talk crap and expect good stuff to roll through the door. That's just insanity. How is it possible that you talk about all these limitations and then expect only the good stuff to show up? I think that's probably some belief that there's something outside of you that is like hand picking through your thoughts and going, oh, she really doesn't want this one. So we won't give her that experience. Oh, he really doesn't like this. 
So we'll make sure that doesn't show up. It doesn't work that way. <sighs> Calm. <laughs> you are a product of who you are being with you. What you're thinking, what you're allowing yourself to focus on, how you're treating your body, how, what you're consuming from beverages to thoughts, from food to emotions, from activities to relationships, from news sources and television programming to the people you surround yourself with, the places you hang out. I remember when I quit drinking, quit drinking for a decade and I lost all of my so-called friends. They were my friends because they resonated with who I was being at the time. But as soon as I changed that fundamental part of me, we had nothing in common anymore. So why would they still hang out with me? I didn't understand it at the time. I was, I was like heartbroken, but coming on the other side of that, I can appreciate it. It's just the nature of human reality, right? So with this whole understanding that we take in life through our senses, then we also create life through our senses. When you can feel something, this is where all the other coaches that are telling you that visualize are missing the magic. When you feel something, it's yours, baby. It is so yours. It just comes with ease and it comes with joy and it'll blow your own mind. You will blow your own mind. I swear to you. I just had this amazing experience. I'll, sh I'll share one thing with you. I was looking for a new place to live. And I had sat down on numerous occasions because I like to be thorough. And I wrote a list of where I wanted to live, how I wanted to live, what it looked like, colors, size, shape, neighborhood experience, the type of people, uh, how much light it got, you know, just everything. I'm a very detail oriented person. And then I, I kind of step back from it and I'd leave it alone for a few days or a week and I'd come back to it. Well, needless to say, I created a really beautiful vision. And then I, I can't even believe I did this. I said, you know, now I need to go about taking action, which is good, but I did it the linear logical way instead of the creative way. I, I should know better by now that I just don't work that way anymore. I mean, I used to, and it was the root of all of my suffering. <laughs> and I used to like try to make things happen or, or try to push things through. So and I just thought maybe I'd give that whole concept another world. So I worked with a realtor and slept a lot till finally one day I'm like, Oh my God, this doesn't have to be like this. I don't have to look at, it is not a numbers game. Can I just say that? Can I just say that's a whole other, that's a sales video, right? It is not a numbers game, but I digress. So I went back to my list and I wrote on the page, I am going to meet someone this is my ideal scenario, I said. I'm going to meet somebody who's going to say to me, I have the perfect place for you. Hey, listen up. Oh, literally, not even a week or two later, I walked into this restaurant and there was a U-shaped bar and I, I, there was seats on either the left side or the right side because I was going to sit at the bar and have dinner. And my instinct, my voice, the voice in me, which I want you to learn to cultivate and trust, okay, said to me, you need to sit on the right hand side of the bar next to that woman. And there was a woman sitting there. So I went over and I sat down and it's like, boom, we struck up a conversation. And um, 
I told her I was not from the area and I was down, you know, seeing a client and kind of looking around the area. And she invited me for dinner up the street with her and her sister. So over dinner, I expressed to her, you know, what I was up to. So she sits back in her chair, she finishes chewing and she looks at me and she goes, I have the perfect place for you. And boom, so perfect. Everything on the list. Could I do better? Always. Can't we always? You know, we're not going to go backwards in life. We're not going to go, okay, the next place, let me find something that's less what I want. We're never going to do that. That's not our human nature. And if you're doing that, stop it right now. So here I am and I'm, I'm living in this perfect place for me because I designed it in my mind. I wrote it on paper which turned it into form because it enabled me to channel my feeling from the vision onto the paper that then energetically dropped it in my lap. And that, my friends, is how you are meant to live your life. So this is episode one of the science of propaganda, which I haven't even started to get into yet, but I've kind of planted some seeds. And the last thing I want to say on this to, in closing is that because we're taking in life through our senses, it can be extremely overwhelming. In fact, it is because it happens 24 seven, you know, stuff, we're absorbing stuff that we don't even hear audibly, you know, it's on another uh, level of megahertz. And, you know, there's stuff going on that we notice but don't notice with our eyesight. There's stuff happening in the world that we feel that we're not even identifying that we're feeling it. It's really powerful stuff I'm sharing with you. And so what we have to do is we have to somehow chunk that down so that we can manage it. So there's three main filters that we use to chunk down information that we can then do something with in our day-to-day -day living. So those three filters are, we distort things. So we might look at reality and go, I'm gonna distort this into something that works for me. <laughs> and we can do that either consciously or unconsciously. For an example on that would be, let's say there's a car crash and the police are, you know, so they didn't call it a car accident, which is another conversation. Anyway, the police are getting interviews on what happened. And let's say there's eight people and they get eight different stories because we distort, we distort realities. We have to. There's so much information coming in per second. If we don't distort, we'll implode with information. We also delete. We delete stuff that we don't think we need to hold on to. And that's all of these are, are unconscious um, filters that take place that we're not doing it to be you know, nefarious or anything. It just is part of the process. And then we generalize because we have to lump stuff together. So by the time we delete, distort and generalize with ourselves, things can look very, very different. And, and a life can have a sense of a feeling of struggle instead of a sense of a feeling of thriving. So when you learn to discern what your active filters are um, doing to your perceptions of reality, then you start to take control of your mind, your emotions, your vibration, and your results, including your body, your health, your wealth, your relationships, your happiness, your joy, and your ability to create your own reality. So, I think that's a good ending spot because the science propaganda is everything not, everything not creating your own reality. So thank you for being here. I so appreciate it. I love you. I am so happy to be able to do this channel and make sure you subscribe, hit the bell button. If you like the content I'm sharing, definitely get it out to your friends. I'd so appreciate that. We are on the way to really blowing up this channel and I'm gonna have a big 
big, big, big announcement coming out in the first of the year. So let's build the channel and let's get a lot of people here so they can have access to the big announcement too. Love you. Take care. Bye.